So for our next part, we're going to look into how we can uh, set up an actor so that it interacts with our water. We've just kind of gone over all of these simulation parameters within the waterline actor itself. But now let's see what needs to be done to get something simple like a sphere to interact with it. So to start us off, we're just going to drag and drop a sphere into our level. And well, because it needs to move, we're going to make set it to movable and we're going to tell it to simulate physics. So we're just going to search for physics, simulate physics, enable it. And the next thing that we need is for it to generate overlap events. So we're just going to look for generate and generate overlap events over here. So now when we hit play, yep, we're pretty good. Our sphere is now interacting with our water. Uh, something that I forgot to cover is that in our waterline actor, we have another setting called velocity trigger. And that basically tells waterline if an object is simulating physics, it needs to have a velocity higher than 100 for it to be included in our water simulation. Now, if we set this to zero, let's see what happens. Well, our sphere keeps being included in the water simulation no matter what and keeps generating uh, waves. Now, this can be useful for a number of reasons, but right now it's not exactly accurate. But if we go for something really high for like a value of 1000, well, our sphere is not really moving fast enough by its default. So at this point, it will not generate waves. But if we really start shaking it up, at that point, waves will be generated. Now, this setting is on a per waterline actor uh, basis. So you could set these to different values, but ideally a value of 100 is what we found to work quite well. So this is all good and well if your uh, object is being simulating physics. But what if it's not simulating physics and we want it to sort of move? So for example, let's just disable simulate physics and we we're still want to have generate overlap events on. And we want to just place it here and move it around and have it interact. For example, if this is a keyframed animation or something that we've animated with level sequencer. Well, there's a way to do that. Now, the issue is that once simulate physics is disabled, actors will not output velocity. But there is a way around this. So we're just going to search for tag. And under actor tag, under tags, we're going to hit the little add element. And here we're simply going to put type on. And now we're good. So now when we hit simulate, our object will generate waves again. So what does this do? This basically tells waterline, well, if the actor has a value set of on, always include it in the waterline simulation, regardless of its velocity. So this is something that's very useful for things that include animations. So this can be something that either uses animation that's linked to uh, just vertex animation or level sequencer. So we're just going to put a quick couple of examples here. So right here in this case, we have an object that's actually being animated through its material with a uh, world position offset. And this is the sort of quick uh, setup that we have here. We're just grabbing a sine wave with time and that's being multiplied by the actor position on the blue channel. So it's only moving up and down. And now if we hit play, because this is the same sphere that has the actor tag on, we could see that it's still being included in our water simulation, despite the fact that it's not really moving. Another scenario is, well, we might have something, something like an object that we want to generate waves, but not be visible in our main scene. Well, in this case, for the sake of experiment, let's just continue using our sphere. What we need to do is enable these settings. Uh, visible in scene capture only. So once we enable this, our object becomes invisible. And once we hit simulate, well, we could see that it, our sphere still generates waves. So for example, you might have something that's generating a very specific shape or a wake or a ship or something. Well, that's pretty much all you need to do. Just make sure you follow all other guidelines that we showed before in terms of uh, overlap events and uh, physics. Well, unless physics or the uh, tag that is called on. Now, let's say we have an object that's keyframed animation or is just purely animated in sequencer. Well, for starters, let's go to animation and create a quick level sequence. We're just going to drag and drop here in our scene. And let's place another sphere. Now, make sure it's placed near the 
level where it should be generating waves. And in our level sequence, uh, we're just gonna open it up and we can grab our track. Which one was this? Sphere, can we drag and drop this here? Perfect. So we're just gonna keyframe its position here and keyframe its position. And let's just move it here. So now when we move it, move our timeline, our actor will move. So let's hit start simulation. And when we start moving, nothing is happening. Well, again, first of all, we need to make sure our generate overlap events is enabled. And because this is a keyframed animation, so something that's not driven by physics, we need to give it the actor tag on like this. So this particular workflow is very useful for pre-rendered animations for boats or vehicles, something like that. And well, you could see now it's being included in our animation. Now, if you wanna go a step further, for example, where an object is uh, stationary, but you want it to stop generating waves, well, you will need to add in a little bit of logic, a little blueprint logic. So we're just gonna add in an actor, set tags, and you can have, for example, a specific event that gets triggered and we want to add the tag, uh, let's just compile it, add tag on. Uh, so we do need to have an array for it. Compile, and this is going to be on. Then we're gonna have for example, when an object stops moving, we can have tags, but they are, for example, blank. So object is moving, trigger this, which basically gives you a tag on. When stops moving, set tags to, well, blank, zero, nothing.